Welcome back to Mary's Cooking Red Thai Curry. Look, it's a beautiful autumnal evening. I'm excited um, to bring you a feast. We are going to be making my favourite red Thai curry. Now, disclaimers first, and I must tell you this. I don't know if my red Thai curry tastes like a red Thai curry should taste, but I promise you it's so delicious that it doesn't matter if it's not authentic. I'm not pretending to say that it is authentic, but uh, yeah, it's not gonna taste the same as if you go out for Thai, but the whole point of cooking at home is not having to go out. So give it a red hot go, and I'll give you some hacks along the way. You are gonna need some lovely chicken thighs. You can use chicken breasts if you want to. If you want to be like this, because chicken breasts are dry, mate, dry. A selection of vegetables, including mushrooms, woohoo, a capsicum. How about a lovely pak choy or some other green that you find? There's bok choy, there's pak choy. Any of the choys will be just fine. A couple of little spring onions, a lovely chopped up and rinsed eggplant. Some eggplants have this weird spiky kind of thing they do to your mouth. I don't know if you've experienced it, but it's not good. But when you rinse it, it usually takes that spikiness away and eggplant turns out super creamy. Side note, this recipe can be adapted for vegans or vegetarians. And if you are going the vegan slash vegetarian uh, route, root, uh, then definitely you want a lot of good old eggplant because he is your meat. He is the vegetarian's meat. I also like to put in a little bit of broccolini. If you're not as fancy enough to have the alini on the end of it, just have broccoli or broccoli even as some weirdos call it. Some snow peas. These guys, great mates these two. These are sliced water chestnuts. They've got a nice little when you bite into them. I think people would call that a crunch. Fresh herbs. We have some basil that I picked from my garden earlier and we have some coriander that I picked from my supermarket earlier. A couple of limes. These are very important and I apologize. My limes look like they are ready to give up and surrender to death, which is good because there's no coming back from tonight. I've also got some bean shoots. They're kind of like a garnish on top, but it doesn't feel right without them. So look, if you haven't got them, that's fine. They're not expensive, but I swear I never use a whole bag and I always find them at the bottom of my crisper, like turned to a special fermented soup. I've also got some prawns and that's if you're feeling fancy. Mm. Vegans probably want to leave the prawns out. Brown sugar, or you can use palm sugar. I've got some ginger there. Use fresh ginger if you've got it. I've got some fried shallots. Salt and pepper, Sandra and Peter. Sesame oil. Fish sauce. For the vegans among us, if you are making this at home, there is actually a vegan fish sauce you can get from your Asian grocer. Coconut cream, get the good stuff people. Don't get the stuff with chemicals added. And now, look, we're doing, this is home cooking, okay people? Home cooking. So we're not making our curry paste from scratch. Ain't nobody got time for that, as they say. This is my favorite. I am not trying to promote any brand, but I am just saying that in particular, this brand is very good. If you want to make a vegan one, this brand actually does not contain any shrimp or prawn paste. So go for gold with that one. Okay, let's get onto those juicy thighs. Fresh board. I'm gonna bring these little guys over here. Pop them on their backs like so. Plenty of salt and pepper on both sides. Mm. 
Get in there. All right, I'm turning them over. This is the side that definitely needs a lot of salt because you really want that skin to go nice and crispy. Again, if you don't like chicken skin, I guess we can still be friends, but just, just dice it up and chuck, chuck it in. But if you do love a bit of crispy and you're trying to be a bit fancy, this is the way. A little bit of sesame oil. Let's put a little bit on there. And I'm going to pop a bit in my pan and get my pan nice and hot. When you're putting these in, you want to hear a sizzle. Those guys are going to sizzle and crack for a little while. Alrighty, fresh board, fresh knife. I'm going to chop the onion into wedges. And then I'm going to chop all the vegetables up. And you don't have to watch it all. You can listen to some lovely music and watch me do it all very, very quick. Okay, we're going to just check on our chicken. Ooh. She's browning a little bit. We just want to turn them around. Once your chicken is brown on the skin, you want to turn it over. And we'll turn it down a little bit more. I have divided my veggies up. I've got the ones I'm gonna cook for longer. I've got the, the green veggies, which I add right at the end. And then I've got the veggies that can either be used more like a garnish or added at the end. And today I think I'm just gonna add these ones in at the end and I'm gonna leave them whole. While I'm waiting for my chicken to finish cooking, let me take you through the process a little bit. All right. <laughs> you need to open the jar and um, look, it's more complicated for some of us than others. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to need a minute. There you go. This stuff smells so good. Let me tell you a little bit about how I came to make my first red curry. One time I said to my husband, what do you want for dinner? And he said, oh, how about a curry? So I decided to try making a curry and this is what I came up with. So fun story and just goes to show you don't really have to know what you're doing. I think it's quite delicious. All right. Once my chicken's cooked, first thing I'm going to do is put some more sesame oil into the um, hot pan. I'm going to add probably about that much curry paste. Mm, if you're trying to measure it out, I would say a small mountain. Maybe, oh, I don't know, the fist of a five-year-old. I think that's how we do measurement in cooking. Possibly a heaped tablespoon even will do it. Now, in our household, we're not very spicy when it comes to our food. So I'm going to start with less is more. You can always add more later. Let me check on the chicken and then I'm going to take it out of the pan. The chicken needs to be cooked all the way through because even though you're adding it in later, it won't have time to cook later. All right, it's looking pretty good. Nice and crispy, yeah. And you wanna give it some time to rest. I'm not even gonna add any more oil in there because the chicken fat and the sesame oil from before is already doing its job. If you're doing it vegan, obviously you haven't cooked any chicken at this point. So you might wanna add a good dash of sesame oil, get those aromatics flowing. Let's put in our little mountain of curry paste 
Stir it around. We want to cook that off a little bit. I reckon most of you out there could probably handle a bit more curry paste than that. But again, like I said, less is more and then keep adding to it. Okay, we want to let that cook off for a couple of minutes. You stay right there, let me get the onions. That was pretty bossy, wasn't it? We're going to add in the onions and the garlic. Because it's not on a super high heat, you can add in the garlic at the same time as the onions. And you just want to mix those through like that. And also at this point, I always like to add in my eggplant. One moment, I'll grab it. I'm not going to use all of my eggplant today. I'm just going to use about half of that amount. You use as much as your sweet little heart desires. But definitely put some in there, I reckon. Something I forgot to say before is you will need about a cup of water. I'm going to pop the kettle on because boiling water is best. Okay, going to get my beautiful coconut cream ready to go. You know, coconut milk works as well. I just always end up gravitating towards the cream because it's rich and I like it. I'm going to show you a fun little trick with that in a minute. All right, why don't we take our mushrooms over and add them in to the eggplant. Join your vegetable friends. If you're vegetarian, honestly, this is a great dish for you. Obviously without the meat. I'm going to turn it up. I'm bringing it up because I'm about to add some liquid. The first liquid I'm adding is the coconut cream. And then I'm going to put some boiling water into that can. Look at that. Don't even have to get a measuring cup dirty. And we're going to add that in. You might find this a fun fact that I filled the kettle and I used water out of the kettle, but I did actually forget to boil it. So that's going to take a little while to come back up to heat. Whoopsie daisy. At least you know I'm being authentic. Authentically Mary. There's got to be a, a, a mistake in there somewhere. While we're waiting for that to come back up to heat, we are going to start looking at what flavours we can add in to make it all a little bit more delicious. Do you know what? I forgot the ginger. Let's add some ginger in right now. I would normally add the ginger in at the beginning with the paste. Sorry about that. Fish sauce smells like a fish's armpit. Taste similar to a fish's armpit, but when it's mixed with the right things, oh, it loves lime juice. Oh my goodness. If you're ever making a type of beef salad, it's pretty much fish sauce, lime juice, brown sugar or palm sugar. Mm, love it so much. So we're going to add plenty of that in. We're also going to juice up a lime. This guy, you've got to get one. He's so great. I love it. All right. Now this is where my recipe starts to go very merry and probably not very authentic. Please join me and why don't we take with us our water chestnuts while we're at it. I'm actually going to turn it down a bit because I really don't want the coconut cream to separate. I'm going to add in my water chestnuts if you in fact want to add them in. They do add extra carbs to the dish. So if you are trying to stay away from carbohydrates, please don't add those in. This dish has got sugar in it, so that's probably all the carbs you need. All right, I'm gonna put in the juice of half a lime to start with. I am gonna taste it later, and we are gonna taste whether it needs any more lime. I love a lot of lime. I'm zesty like that. Next, fish sauce. I want to tell you it's about a teaspoon, 
but really it's just like a really good shake. All right, but maybe add it teaspoon by teaspoon and taste it as you go. Then I'm gonna add in a probably half a teaspoon of brown sugar or palm sugar. Palm sugar is more authentic. Brown sugar is more likely to be found in the average pantry. We really need to let that eggplant soak in all of that delicious yummy juice. And look, it doesn't look like much now, but once we've got all those greens in there, it is going to be a feast for your eyes as well as your mouth hole. Taste test time. This is super important to do. It's not just because I want to have a bite before it's ready. It's because you really want to get it to just the right balance and all of this kind of stuff. Look, if you don't follow very direct recipes, you need to do this often. So let's get a little bit on our spoon. Don't want to burn off my flavor buds. Mm. It's nice. It's the right amount of curry paste. It definitely needs more lime and more fish sauce for my taste. Again, you just need to work out what you like and go with that. So I'm gonna add the other half of my lime. A smackerel more fish sauce, probably about the same amount as I added the first time. I've turned it down because it was really boiling quite a lot. I'm actually gonna add also one last little tiny bit of brown sugar. And I'm actually gonna add a tiny little bit of salt as well. Let me tell you why. The fish sauce adds in a bit of the salt the lime adds in the acidity, the brown sugar brings in the sweetness and all those three things combined give you a really yummy, delicious foundation for your flavours. But I always feel a tiny little pinch of salt helps as well in with that fish sauce. Alrighty. Okay, you will know this is starting to get ready when the eggplant starts to actually soften up a bit more than it is. So we're just gonna let that simmer on a low heat until such a time that is ready. Alrighty, seafood, time to add some prawns in. You don't wanna add them too early because they will overcook. You don't wanna add them too late because gross. Let's go straight on in. Get in there. I'm gonna turn it up so those prawns cook. There we go. Now, this whole thing took about 15 minutes to soften up that eggplant. It might take a little bit longer. Now we're gonna add in our greens and our reds. It's almost Christmassy. How good does that look? So many vegetables. So much colour, so much deliciousness. I'm gonna leave that for a couple of minutes till all those prawns are cooked and the greens are slightly softened. Okay, let's take a quick minute to get our basil and our coriander. And we're just gonna chop that all together. If you have coriander haters in your household, leave the coriander out. Don't leave the basil out though, gosh. He is a herb that is quite international. So many different people use basil and it's delicious. I'm chopping the stalks in with the coriander too. I'm just doing the whole lot because I'm actually a bit pressed for time. I just wanna have all my little bits and pieces ready to go. And I'm gonna pop those in a little dish. Now, if you're having people over for dinner, you don't have a lot of time, you don't have a lot of skill. <laughs> this, this is the way to make people think that you know what you're doing. Taking my chicken, I'm gonna turn him over because it's easier to cut that way and keep your skin intact. 
Okay, I'm going to pop the chicken back onto that board. Oh. <laughs> oh man, I'm a delicate flower. That is heavy. Now I'm a big fan of the juice. That's my favorite bit. So I like a lot of juice, kind of like a lax luxor or something. Richard, he prefers the substance, the other bits. So he'll always have a big bowl of juice left at the end. And I've got all these bits and pieces left and I like the soup, that's my favorite bit. If you want it to look fancy, put a few of these guys near the top. You know, prawns always look impressive if you've got people over. Okay, and then we're gonna add crispy side up. Whoops. <laughs> look at that, that looks so yummy. I won't lie about it, I can't. I wouldn't. And then we are going to sprinkle with herbs all over. The herbs really make this dish few of these little spring onions, deep fried shallots. You can have a little or shallot of them. Yes, that's what I said. You want a little bit of these bean shoots. Like I said, bean shoots always go to die in my fridge, but they look so pretty on top, don't they? And then last but not least, especially if you've got a nice lime, you've got to put a little lime on top. And there you have it. My Thai red curry with prawns and chicken. So easy, so delicious. I swear, you'll impress the friends. Mm, 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 mm.